Last time we rendered a maze and this time I want to generate a maze. I'm going to use the binary tree method. Um, why it's called the binary tree we'll see in a second as well. But it's a very simple algorithm and I think it's a nice introduction to maze generation. So how does it work? Um, we're going to look at each cell individually and for each cell we're going to decide if we're going to go to the north or to the east. If we have only one choice, like let's say we are at the corner here, then we're going to pick always north or always east. If we have no choice in the top right corner here, we're not going to pick either. So if we can just play through this, and that's, it actually doesn't matter which cell we pick, so we're going to pick them at random. If we look at the bottom lower cell, for example, let's say we will pick to the right, let's look at the center one, let's just go up. Um, this one, let's just go right. We have no choice here. These all have no choice. And the last cell to look at is this one, and let's just go also go to the right, doesn't matter. So the maze we end up with, and we can see it has no cycles and it fulfills our condition that we can reach every point from every point. So why is this called a binary maze or a binary tree um, generation? If I'm going to pick a um, tree, if we pick this, look at this cell, and we try to draw a binary tree, we'll find that and, and follow the, the paths here. If we look at this one here, uh, if we add this one here, we, we see it also has two paths. So we can then, let me switch colors here, draw the um, next cells like a binary tree. Um, this one has another cell here. Going to run out of colors real soon. And space. I'm sorry. And right, so we can see that we can represent this maze as a binary tree. That's why it's called the binary tree, because any graph representation of the maze ends up looking like a tree, binary tree. So now that we understand what kind of algorithm this is and how it works, let's implement it. Let me write here a new function. We want to generate a binary tree maze and it's supposed to return a maze object. Let me zoom in a bit for you. <clears throat> it should take in the size of a maze. And I'm also going to add a source of entropy because we have randomness, which is supposed to just return us a number. It's, it's a function that returns a number. Let's also remove our maze here and instead call the function. Let's make it 20 by 20. Let's make it five by five first so that we can see it a bit easier. We also need a source of entropy, our random number generator. We could use math.random, but I don't like that we can't see it. So I'm going to use my own. This is just a function that returns a, num a different number every time it's called and we can see that with a hash. Don't worry about this part. Uh, you could just use uh, math.random here. I'm going to use R, my own random number generator. The, the reason I want to do this is that every time I reload the page, I want to see the same maze so that I can see and identify the, what my changes actually did. And if we use math.random, we'd see a different maze every time. 
So the way we're going to generate our maze is going to be the same way we just did it in the diagram. We're just going to initialize our maze. Which will take a height, which will take a width. Right, this gives us our 1D array of our cells with the cells initialized correctly with X, Y according to our index here. The next step is now to just carve our paths. And for that we're going to iterate through each cell and pick the north or east path if it is available to us. So if the cell is at the top, so if cell dot y equals zero, then our paths that we have available is only um, east. And if our x is zero, um, sorry, is our width minus one, meaning we are at the right edge, then we have to pick north. And if we are at the top right corner, we don't do anything. We can't pick east or north. And in the other case, we're going to pick east or north at random. So if r is smaller than 0 0.5, we're going to pick north and else we're going to pick since we're going to have the code here repeating, I'm going to create our pick east and pick north functions here. So the first thing we want to do to doors is add um, our direction north. And we also want to add the direction south to the cell to the north of this one. We stay on the same thing, but we want to go up by one and one is negative, uh, up is negative. And then we can get our cells. and push into the doors our direction south. Can do the same thing for pick east, except we're picking east and west. And we're not shifting on the y, we're shifting on the x. And we're actually going one to the right. Then we can pick east here. We still have a, yeah, we still need to return our maze here. If we take a look at our maze, we can see it's nearly correct. We have a maze. Um, the top left corner seems to be not correct. And the top right corner seems to have picked a path to the east. And this cell seems to be also broken. Now I already have a suspicion here and that is this here. This should be with minus one. 
and if we take a look at our uh, maze, then we see now it is correct. And what I just meant before is if we reload this page, we're going to see the same maze every time, which is nice for us. But if I picked here map.random instead, and if I reload the maze now, we can see we are getting a different maze every time. And go back to the maze we have. We can see some interesting features of this and I want to discuss that more in the next video when we're looking at maze texture. And that is the north corridor and the east corridor here is continuous. And if we think about it, it has to be continuous. Because when we are on the right edge, we have to always pick north. So we'll always have these two connected. And another thing we can notice is that to get to the top right corner, all we need to do is just go northeast. We'll always find that path. So finding the, the, the root of our tree is really easy. We'll see that better when we actually take a look at the texture, which we'll do next time. If you like what I'm doing, feel free to subscribe, leave a comment or join my Discord.